Hey everybody, welcome back to Red Mug Music. Glad you could be back with me today. And today we're going to rediscover Duran Duran's album, Duran Duran, or also known as The Wedding Album. So let's do it. First, before I go on, if you're if you're new to the channel, I wanted to let you know that we've done quite a few of these rediscovery out. Uh, videos and what I mean by rediscovery is you know we're not reviewing albums because they were reviewed when they first came out I kind of feel like what we're doing is we we are rediscovering some of these old albums you know we're pulling them back off the off the shelf and wiping the dust off and, and playing it or spinning the record or whatever you have and and just kind of figuring out you know what's there and you know what we loved about these albums and what was not so great about these albums and speaking of that I need to I need to say this because a lot of people are making these comments and I think I just need to clarify what's going on here. I love Duran Duran. They're probably in my top five most favorite bands of all time. They are in my top five, maybe the top three. And uh, sometimes they're my you know favorite band ever. But uh, what you have to realize is that I have a very critical mind when it comes to music. And there's, there's not a band out there that I just absolutely adore everything that they do from, from beginning to end. It's just not possible for me. You know, I, I mean, some of my favorite bands are like Prince, oddly enough, Alice in Chains. I've, you know, kind of a wide array of interest here in Duran Duran. And there's not one single album that that any of these uh, bands have produced or artists that i i couldn't pick apart i just i have a critical mind when it comes to music and that's just how i am and that's why i have a youtube channel if i loved everything by duran duran this youtube channel would be boring i'd be like hey this is the first song i love it the second track i love it the third track I love it. The fourth track, eh, just kidding. I love it. How boring is that? So if, if I just absolutely loved everything, all the albums, all the songs, all the lyrics, all the, you know, the vocals, it, if I liked it all, I, this would not be worth me doing. Absolutely not. So with this critical mind I have, which I'm trying to learn how to articulate it better, uh, I, I, I feel like I can kind of in a, in a good way, uh, relate to you what I'm hearing. And, uh, and a lot of times, a lot of people absolutely do agree, or I'll say something and people will be like, Oh, I didn't even think of it that way. You know, so that's what we're doing here. But in the end, we're enjoying music. We're enjoying Duran Duran. So subscribe, you know, come along for this journey. And, you know, when you hear something you like, comment down below, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know that you didn't like it. There's a thumbs down there, down there for a reason. So do it. I, it's, it's okay with me. But anyway, let's get on back with the video. So like I said, we're going to rediscover the wedding album by Duran Duran track by track. And we're going to start with track number one, which is called Too Much Information. I think this is a very good start to the album. I think it sounds like a beginning song. I think he did a really good uh, job here, just like in Liberty. You know, it's just it's just that kind of a sound. It's 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 anthemic. And I think uh, and I think it did a really good job with this. However, I don't think that too much information should have ever been a single. This is not the type of music that needs to be a single. It didn't carry the album whatsoever. It should have just been the beginning song and that's it. So, you know, but too much information is a very good song. I love the guitar sound. Uh, I love the beat. I love everything about it. It's a really good song. Song number two, we all know, Ordinary World. This is one of the songs that catapulted Duran Duran back into the spotlight. And it's an amazing song. Uh, and of course, it sounds like a single, and it was a single. Uh, Warren's guitar is actually what I think makes this song so distinguishable. And uh, during the Duran Duran reunion, when Andy came back, Warren was actually asked to come back to teach Andy how to play this and come undone on guitar so he would do it correctly, which I think was kind of cool. So there's a fun fact for you, for you there. Uh, but Ordinary World is absolutely one of those top-notch songs by Duran Duran and definitely one of those that help uh, push this album into 
the into the success that it had. So good stuff there. Song number three is called Love Voodoo. Love Voodoo starts with this drum track in the bass. And uh, it's actually one of my least favorite bass lines that John Taylor does. In my opinion, this could have been really anybody that, that played it. I didn't feel like it had his signature sound. And yes, I know it doesn't have to be his signature sound every time. But I just found it to be kind of a boring bass line. And it just, I, I didn't like the way they started this out. Yeah, the, and the singing, the, the vocals in the verse is kind of monotone. But then it gets to the chorus and it's pretty amazing. So overall, I like Love Voodoo. I think it's really good. Uh, and I just, I've always enjoyed that contrast, uh, the vocal contrast between the verses and the chorus. And it's, I think, one of the distinguishing um, uh, attributes of Duran Duran is that kind of uh, song structure. And I really like it. So actually, at, at song number three, we got Too Much Information, Ordinary World, and Love Voodoo. So really, we're off to a really good start. The fourth song is called Drowning Man. Now, Drowning Man starts out with warring guitar that I do not like. It's so sporadic and just strange sounding. I just don't care for that. I had somebody say, you know, I'm surprised you don't like Warren more than you do because he's he's got that rock sound. I mean, who really wants to play Warren's guitar in Drowning Man? It's just, I've never heard anybody try it. Maybe if you have, Lista, if, if it's like, if you have... If you've heard somebody playing Drowning Man on guitar that you can find on YouTube or you can list a link down below, do that so we can listen to it. I'd be surprised to hear it. Uh, but it's so sporadic, especially in the solo. Uh, it's very sporadic there as well. But I think a song sounds like a remix, like it's a remix version of, the, of its own original song. Uh, and maybe it is, but uh, I, I don't like that kind of sound. So Drowning Man is definitely not one of my favorites. Um, it just sounds like a beat with a lot of filler and I just feel like the song, I, I think a song sounds like in itself, like it's just a filler. Uh, so drowning man, I mean, I can, I like Simon Le Bon. I like the way he sings the song. I think it's good, but the music is what I don't like. All right. Track number five shotgun. What is this? What the hell is this? I, I don't understand what, what shotgun is supposed to be. Um, I don't see the purpose. It's too long to be a song, uh, like a real legitimate song, and it's too short to be a segue, and there's no actual like connection between Drowning Man and the next song. So I don't really see the purpose of uh, Shotgun. If you know the purpose, comment down below and tell me what this purpose is, and do you think this has any... Um, like, Is there anything that the Shotgun brings to this album? What am I missing? I, I don't like it. I skip this every time. It's one of the, and the thing about it is drowning man, a shotgun back to back before you get to the next song, which is actually really good. I think slow down this album and weaken it quite a bit. And I've heard a lot of people say uh, that the last half, just like a uh, big thing, the last half of this album is kind of uh, better than the first, except for the big, big hits, which there's a big hit next, which is called come undone. Come Undone is another really good uh, song by Warren. Um, he was actually creating a, a new arrangement for the song First Impression on the Liberty album. And the song wasn't actually meant to be uh, put on the, the new wedding album, but Simon heard it and he started throwing lyrics on it. Like he started writing lyrics and next thing you know, they're, they just, they were going to add it to the album. So come and done was actually kind of a mistake and it was a last minute, maybe last second addition to the album. Thank goodness. And here's a fun fact about come on done. The bass player wasn't even John Taylor. He didn't play on the song at all. It was actually producer John Jones. He played the bass along with the uh, drums and the keyboard and did some vocals. So there's a fun fact for you about Come Undone. All right, now we're on track number seven, which is called Breath After Breath. I've already had somebody yell at me before because I couldn't think of this guy's name. I know it's Milton, but his last name, I have it written down here, but I don't know how you say it. Uh, Nesamento. I don't know if you know the pronunciation of Milton's last name that sings on the song breath after breath, comment down below and let me know how it said do us all, you know, teach us all how to say his name. 
Uh, but anyway, this song, Breath After Breath, was only released in Brazil, which is which makes sense because I can see the, the draw there. But this is a gorgeous song with Milton. Uh, I love the chorus and I love the bridge where Milton and Simon are, are kind of singing off of each other. This is great. I, this is the, this is the highlight of the entire song. I just think this is really good stuff. So breath after breath is definitely one of my favorites. And then we're going to jump over to, it's kind of funny that we go from this gorgeous song to UMF. UMF is very naughty. <laughs> Ultimate mind f- is what it's called. And, uh, but they were nice enough just to put UMF on there because I don't think it's part of Duran Duran's brand to put, you know, swear words in their lyrics. So, or their song name, so, or title. So it's kind of funny. In my opinion, I think the bass is a little too quiet. Um, it could have been a little bit more funky if, if they had just turned that bass up a little bit. I just always have this idea that John Taylor's bass needs to be in the forefront because it's a very strong, distinct sound that John, I mean, he's one of the best bassists ever. He is so good. So I don't know. I mean, it's not like you hear a red hot chili pepper song, you know, without, you know, with flea completely covered up in the background, you know, you have a good bassist, you, you, you use them, right? To me, UMF is a Liberty type song that they actually put more time into it because I think they kind of lost focus and didn't do a great job on Liberty. Um, but they put a lot more time into it. So it actually made the song very fun and, and actually really, really good. But in the end, um, around four minute and 20 seconds, it, the, the instruments change. The, it, it becomes fuller. They add some instruments here. And I always wondered, why did they not just do that throughout the whole song? Why didn't they have this fuller song or fuller sound throughout the whole song? I never really understood that. But it's a good song. I like UMF a lot. Song number nine. Actually, we're getting to the last half here. Song number nine is called Femme Fatale. I think Duran Duran was made to cover Lou Reed songs, or in this case, Velvet Underground, and to cover Lou Reed uh, written ballads because they do it so good. And in my opinion, they do it so good. This may not be very popular. I don't like Velvet Underground. I don't, maybe it's just the era or the hippiness to it. I just don't like velvet underground. So the fact that Duran Duran can come in and recreate some of their stuff so I can enjoy it is awesome. Um, I think Simon Le Bon really smooths out the vocals by Nico. Nico was a female lead singer for velvet underground. I think he does a great job of straightening all that up and he just made it a much better song. So I think femme fatale by Duran Duran is a hundred times better than femme fatale by velvet underground. So now we're going to get into song number uh, 10, which is called None of the Above. None of the Above. I like this song a whole lot. I love the acapella start, and I think it's very well done. And it was, I think it was only released in Japan, um, but it has a great guitar by Warren. I really like what he does on here. Um, I do think the song is a little too long, and I think it just being too long, it just creates a lot of redundancy. Don't really understand why they do that, but... You know, but it's a good song. But what is the song about? Does anybody know? To me, it sounds like it's about God, right? Or or a God. Uh, it puts my faith in none of the above. What's it about? Comment down below and tell me what you think. Or maybe you've heard Duran Duran talk about, you know, what the song is about. Um, all right. So now we're going to get to song number 11, which is called Shelter. I love Nick Rhodes on this song. But actually, since I say that, I have to also include that D. Long uh, actually played keyboards on this song as well, which I thought was strange, but I think the keyboards are great. Uh, I like the keyboards on shelter and Simon's falsetto is really, really good. I think he did a really good song. And, uh, and, and I know a lot of times this falsetto is used in the harmony part. So I, I, I really like that. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but the whole time I've ever listened to Duran Duran, I've always noticed the background vocals, the backing vocals. And I, there's a lot of times I can, you know, I can hear the band or like in Notorious, you can hear, you know, there's female backing vocals and you, you hear them. It's, it's obviously, you know, female backing vocals, but so many times 
I would listen to the backing vocals. I'm like, who is that? That I mean, it's so beautiful and so perfect. And I just don't, I can't place, is it John? Is it Andy? I don't really feel like it's Andy. You know, I don't think they brought somebody else in just to do backing vocal. I mean, I guess they could, they do. But, uh, but I come to find out it was just Simon. Simon would very often just do his backing vocal. And it took me years to figure that out. Uh, but the acapella, uh, not acapella, sorry, the, the falsetto uh, backing vocal that harmonizes with, with himself is beautiful. But I think Shelter, I, I love the complexity of Shelter. I think it's a little bit more complex than your normal Duran Duran song. So I think it's really good. I like Shelter a lot. All right, now we're on to track number 12 uh, called To Whom It May Concern. This has a really nice intro. Uh, I think the bass gives it a, a, a really nice funk sound. And the actually, another fun fact, the lyrics are actually by Nick Rhodes, which Simon sings with so much passion and so much attitude. It's a really good song. And Warren, uh, if you notice in the end, he's doing these harmonics on the guitar. I think he does a really good job there. So to whom it may concern, track number 12, really good. I don't know if you've realized, but I've really enjoyed this album from like track number six. I didn't care for four and five. I think those could have been either reworked or just brought out all together. And I think it would have made the album a lot better. Uh, but actually I did. And I, I was going to say, I, I did like a reconstruction of this album. I'll, I'll list it right here, which I put the songs in a different order. And sometimes, you know, I'll take a song out that I think is weak. And I'll, I, I did it a while back, but I think ever since I did it, that I actually changed my uh, attitude a little bit about it. And because I don't think I included this next song, which is called Sin of the City, and I should have because it's a really good track. Um, I don't know why I didn't include it, but it, it's it's definitely good. This is the last song on the album. It has a really nice intro. and uh, but, get, but again, to me, it, Sin of the City kind of sounds like a remix rather than the original. I'm wondering why we're getting, I'm, I'm feeling a lot of these, well, at least two of these songs sounded like remixes. Uh, not the biggest fan of that sound. I mean, I like remixes back in like 85 when, when remixes were kind of the big thing. You know, you wanted to hear everything remixed because it was so cool. But um, I don't want to hear it on the actual album or I don't want to hear if it's, I don't want to hear songs sound like a remix on the actual album. And I think this one does sound like that. Um, I'm not a big fan of the choppiness of the verse. And, uh, but the chorus is absolutely killer. And again, the, the anticipation you get from the verse going into the chorus. I like that with Duran Duran. I say it all the time, but I think the chorus in itself is what makes this song and what makes the song so good. So I, I would imagine a lot of people that like sin of the city, like it because it's got a really good chorus, but I think it's a really good ending of the, to the album, which, uh, you know, the wedding album, we'll just call it that has a really good start, a lot of really good music in between, uh, give or take two songs and, uh, and a really good ending. So it's a good album. Now, in my opinion, this isn't really one of my go-to albums. I don't listen to wedding album too often. Um, I think Duran Duran got lucky. I mean, if you want to call it that with come undone in ordinary world. And, uh, we can all thank Warren for that because he's really the reason why these songs exist. But I think without these two songs, I don't think this album would have done really that much good. I don't think it would have done good at all. I think it would actually would have been in a t maybe bottom five albums, maybe number 10, 11, 12. But this is a lot of people's favorite album, but only because it has come undone in Ordinary World, which I kind of fight that because I don't like to base an album on just a track or two tracks or three tracks. I think an album needs to be a good album, good beginning, good segues, good transitions, a good ending song, really solid content and a, and a particular idea and a good flow. And I don't think flow is that great on this album. So that's why I'm, it's not ranked any higher than I have it. And I actually think if you watch my, my second video that I ever did ranking Duran Duran albums, I think I kind of overranked this album. 
Sometimes I feel like I did. Sometimes I feel like I didn't. But when Future Past comes out, I'm going to rank all the albums again. And some of them can move. So watch that. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. So whenever that album comes out, which it will at the, you know, later this year after Future Past comes out and I have time to listen to it, uh, we'll see how all the other albums land. I think that'll be super fun. But that's it. That's all I have for you today, uh, except for my sponsor, which is Holly Carter, uh, which is a vacation consultant with the Magic for Less Travel. I'll just put her link down below. So if you need to get a free no obligation quote for, you know, if you want to go to Universal uh, in California or Orlando or Disney and either or any kind of a cruise, she's going to be your person to go to because she's really, really, really good. And uh, so I definitely highly, highly recommend Holly Carter with the Magic for Less Travel. Check her out. And speaking of checking out, you can check out my Instagram at Red Mug Music. Also, my Twitter, you can you can follow me there at Red Mug Music. I think that would be super fun. I'm still kind of learning what I'm doing there, so that's super fun. Oh, and while I'm talking about uh, social media, uh, my buddy Matt with uh, uh, he's he's got this band called Bitter Machines, and you can follow him on Twitter. It's it's at Bitter Machines. Uh, this guy, he's a singer and songwriter uh, that, that, that is, has this band called Bitter Machines. And he does a lot of Duran Duran covers. And I will tell you, I was, he, he, I was listening to it. And this is really good stuff because he doesn't create, recreate the music exactly the way Duran Duran did it. He, he definitely puts his own magic on it like his own twists and and the arrangements are different like i think he, he does like winter marches on and it's phenomenal like it's really good and eventually once i'm done and matt i, I promise i'm going to do this uh i'm going to really dive into his catalog because he's got a fairly lengthy catalog and i just want to listen to all of it and, and just kind of give a, an idea of what i think about it which i think it's going to be good so check out or at Bitter Machines, and I'm sure he can uh, guide you to his catalog, and you can check all that out. So if you like Duran Duran, I think you're going to like this guy a lot because he's he's pretty amazing. So Matt, that's good stuff, Matt. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for today. I'm glad you were able to join me as we rediscovered Duran Duran's album, uh, the Wedding Album. But don't forget, uh, I also like to cover the uh, like the B-sides or the bonus material or material that was released in other, in the other countries like Time for Temptation, Stop Dead, There's Falling Angel, and uh, I think that's it. Uh, looks like that may sum it up. If there are any more B-sides or anything else related to this album that I'm missing... Uh, outtakes let me know I, I don't want to do them all because it could take forever and I, don't, I just don't have that kind of time but once I get moved maybe it's going to be easier for me to do but I release shorts with a very quick idea like a minute long of, of my review of those songs and uh, just make sure you stay tuned and enjoy those as well so all right I'll see you guys next week